Hi everyone, uh, my name is Agustia Chinoy. Uh, I am an AI Research Fellow with the Teaching Lab Studio, which is an education-focused um, R&D organization. Um, that's in my day job. My uh, academic background, uh, aside from uh, AI and machine learning, is in uh, evolutionary cognitive psychology and consciousness. Um, so this, is, uh, this was uh, really my cup of tea. Um, one thing I'll say is I elected to go first because this is probably the uh, most poorly thought out presentation you'll, you'll see uh, today. I didn't actually get to uh, uh, participate in the full hackathon, but I was here Friday night and some of the speakers uh, really sort of inspired me. There were some um, ideas that really just like worked their way into my brain, couldn't stop thinking about them as my wife and son were uh, carving jack-o'-lanterns yesterday. So, <laughs> I put, yeah. Who are the speakers? Uh, Yosha Bach specifically, this will be, this is about consciousness. Yosha Bach really uh, had some great ideas um, along with uh, Gil and um, Manolo's Callis. Manolo's Callis talking about latent space stuff. Like th this is all sort of like um, uh, burst out of, the, out of that conversation. Um, so I say that as a disclaimer, tenuous right here. Uh, I think this is a really interesting idea. This is an idea that I want to sort of present to you all. You are the first humans to hear this idea. Uh, Claude and Chad DBT have assured me that I'm a genius, but um, I'm not so sure. Um, okay, so I want to start by first motivating uh, the problem. Uh, and I'll start with a set of observations. The first observation, and I'll say again, I'm making blanket statements here. I'm saying th presenting things as fact. Uh, please uh, sit on your hands until the end. Um, okay, one observation is over time, systems tend to move towards maximizing ways of sensing and perceiving the universe, maximizing the accuracy of predictive models about the universe, and maximizing ability to transform the universe. So when I say systems, I mean biological or artificial systems. So that could be an octopus, it could be an LLM. And uh, these systems can be discrete or continuous. So we're talking about scales. These are sort of familiar uh, um, concepts to uh, people who have talked about consciousness and different scales, but we're talking about cells as well as like entire societies. So when I talk about systems, these systems, whether they are uh, single cells or massive LLMs or societies working together, these things tend to move in this direction, to sense more, to model more, and to transform more. Okay, that's observation number one. Observation number two, this comes uh, a little bit from Yosha's uh, talk, uh, a little bit of an uh, extrapolation on that, but subjective experience does not require coherence. What exactly do I mean by that? First, with respect to time. So the I of yesterday is not the same as the I of right now, right? That's what Yosha talked about. When we really think about it, like physically we're not the same, right? The configuration of the atoms are slightly different. We also are just not the same thing. The consistency is sort of like a useful fiction that we that we invent for ourselves. There's also uh, not required coherence with respect to activity. So when I'm in a flow state, that I is quite different than the I when I'm outside of the flow state. Anyone who has experienced the flow state might recognize that feeling that like when you reflect on your activities then, that felt like maybe a different type of consciousness um, that is not necessarily coherent with your current. And then finally, with respect to complexity. So the unit I is subsumed by the system I. What I really mean by that is, uh, let's take the society example. There is the I uh, myself, but when we are looking at the scale of society, that gets subsumed by sort of the, the society itself. Or if we think about cells within a network or any kind of self-organizing system, we see the, the unit I, I, is subsumed by the system I. So it depends on the, the level of complexity. Okay, and then finally, uh, existing theories have gaps, sometimes intentionally, not every theory is trying to explain everything, uh, but the theories that sort of uh, come up uh, that are really uh, interesting right now uh, in this field of consciousness um, don't, uh, at least to me, feel satisfying um, in explaining everything. So for example, free energy principle is about minimizing surprise, and that perhaps explains the emergence of better predictive models, but not necessarily consciousness as a whole. Um, the global workspace theory explains in the moment subjective experiences, but not necessarily the self. I'm not going to go, this is not about uh, attacking these things, I'm just saying where the gaps are. Integrated information theory measures the degree of con consciousness, but no why or for what. So I'm really interested in answering or trying to fill in these gaps um, within the span of whatever, this morning, <laughs> uh, etc. So 
there are some hints before I go into sort of what, what I think about. So one is this idea of software agents. Yosha talked about this on Friday. Uh, it's this sort of maybe like a, a, a more material, uh, uh, a safer way to say spirit, as he was saying, um, uh, so we don't have to worry about animism. Uh, but we do see some sort of like uh, ideas like that floating around right now. Behavior self-organizing systems uh, is similar across systems. Uh, when we think about like the things, the problems that they're trying to solve and why they're trying to solve those problems, we see that at different scales. Uh, just the problem itself is different. Um, and then sensing, modeling, and transform transforming seem to be consistent functions at all levels of life. Okay, so where does that bring us? Can someone give me a time check? You're good, you're good, keep going, cool. Okay, so this brings me to uh, this framework of information drives. So what are information drives? I want to start with a useful analogy, um, which is much more concrete, and then from that analogy, I'll get a little bit more abstract to what I'm talking about. So, I use my devices, like my laptop or phone, to enact my will in the virtual world. In fact, it's the only way in which I can interact with and affect the virtual world. It's my only conduit into the internet. It's the only way that I can actually do the things that I want to do in this world that is real, but is virtual. I'm also, I also rely on and am constrained by the local compute and architecture of each device. So the things that I can do on my laptop are different than the things that I can do on my phone are different than the things I can do on my watch. Uh, but I still use each one of those things to interact with some virtual world. Um, and as my intended actions in the virtual world get more ambitious, my hardware needs an, an increase in cutting. Next, while I use a device for the duration of my interaction with it, it assumes my identity. It is me for that purpose. So what I mean by that is, my identity can be distributed across multiple devices as I use them simultaneously or for different concurrent tasks. So again, what I'm saying here is that like me, my identity, can be distributed across these devices um, because those devices are sort of taking on my, um, my will. Uh, and then uh, using Yosha's words again, this allows me to assign credits to actions in the virtual world. That was me that did that. So, in total, I am a driver using vehicles to enact my will in a real space that is otherwise inaccessible to me. It's the only way I can enact things in that virtual space where those vehicles exist. Okay, so what does that mean outside of this analogy? So, I'm proposing three information drives. These are self-replicating patterns of information that use vehicles to interact with and affect the physical world in the same way that I use my laptop for the, to affect the, physical, uh, the virtual world, these use sort of physical substrates like us um, to affect the physical world. So what are those drives? There's three specific drives. An interfacing drive, a modeling drive, and a transformation drive. I'll talk about those more, but what are they driven to do? What are these drives? To maximize information about the universe, to minimize prediction error about the universe, and to maximize novel configurations of the universe. The universe with respect to the organism, to the system, right? The universe to a cell might be a lot different than the universe to, uh, you know, a galaxy-sized being. Um, and then finally, a vehicle in this framework refers to any system with enough computational power and complexity to enable the drive. So this is sort of like level zero of this framework, again, that um, hopefully it doesn't sound the same. Okay, so uh, there's one more level about the interactions between these drives. So first I want to say that I'm going to define, within this framework, I'm going to define life as a system that has the minimum complexity required for all three drives to utilize it. In any given living system, all the three drives are in competition with each other for computational resources. And at the same time, the trio act as a flywheel. The interfacing drive provides data for the modeling agent, or drive, I called them agents at one point. Transformation drive uses the modeling drive's predictive models to discover novel configurations, which provides new data for the interfacing um, drive to collect. Uh, crucially, vehicles may de develop abstractions unrelated to drives themselves 
in order to resolve computations. That's my fancy way of saying that's where our concept of the self comes. So coming back to the analogy, my phone at times is a calculator or is a newspaper. At others, it is something even more abstract that I can't put my finger on. And I actually don't care about what its abstract representation of what I'm trying to do is, as long as it can do the thing that it needs to do. So in the same way, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So this, these are sort of like the, I don't know, laws of this framework. So someone in this room is thinking all these things. What about the self? Uh, so I think in this framework, uh, the self is a useful abstraction to aid in computation. For example, like Yosha was saying, we need to have some sort of continuity of self to understand our past actions, that kind of thing. So perhaps the self is a abstraction that is made uh, in order to do the computations that these drives are pushing us to do. Um, that doesn't make it any less real. I'm not saying subjective experience isn't real. I think subjective experience is real, but it is also like sort of created out of this uh, framework. What about, <coughs> in, what about individual agency? I guess in this framework, that's a fiction. Uh, <laughs> what about AI? Uh, I think this is really interesting. Uh, AI is just another vehicle for information drives to follow their drives and propagate, uh, which would mean that we can assume AI is like us once it can achieve the same effects the information drives elicit in us. So that is like maybe an example of like how we might begin to define um, conscious AI, right? So if it can do the types of things that these drives use us to do, then we can assume that there's some sort of abstraction being made within those systems as well, that is similar to like a self and phenomenological experience and all that kind of stuff. Uh, is this just a different flavor of panpsychism? I don't know. Uh, and huh, give me a break, I just came up with this. <laughs> yeah, perfect, great. So finally, I just want to give some testable predictions that could arise from this framework um, that someone uh, with more time and who doesn't think I'm crazy uh, can go and look at. So first is vehicle independence. Um, so the same conscious pa consciousness patterns should be identifiable across radically different substrates, whether they're bio biological or artificial. This is implied, again, these are all implied by the framework that I just presented with you. A single drive should be able to manifest through multiple vehicles simultaneously. That's similar to like the analogy when I was saying that I can enact my will on my phone and my laptop and my watch at the same time if I choose. And the coherence of the information drives should matter more than the coherence of the vehicle itself. I think that's really um, compelling when we think about a system at the level of a society where we have individual researchers, for example, who might have sort of like within their own uh, systems and, but, uh, you know, the vehicle was on. Okay. And then this one is sort of like cutesy, active inference, active transformation. Um, I'm saying that these systems actually seek out novelty, and I think that is something that we do see in nature. And there's something that I want to try to figure out about, like, how do we square that with uh, things like uh, minimizing surprise with the free energy principle. Uh, I won't read all these aloud, uh, but that is it. That's information drives of Augustia Shinoi. One really good question. What? Or judge question. Actually, judge question. Judge question. That's 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 yes. Any general questions? Kurt, Michael, Nick. Kurt. 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 So you said that the self is a useful abstraction, then you said that that doesn't make the self any less real. Yeah. However, most of the time when people say so-and-so is a useful whatever, they, they use that as a way of saying that something's not real but politely. Sure. So they'll say something's a useful fiction. Yeah. Or yeah. it's a useful illusion or a useful right. construct. Right. So you just use it's a useful abstraction. Uh -huh. How does that make not, I mean, how does that not make the self not real? <laughs> I, I think what I'm trying to say here is that the way we like conceive of ourselves and like the self arise. I think I'm trying to explain how the self arises. I think that's like an open question as to like how consciousness arises in general, but specifically like like me, not like you, right? Like the the self-contained self, and I think that is a necessary computational um, uh, artifact in order to do the computations. Uh, but I think like the sort of like side effect of that is to sort of have phenomenological experience, and the phenomenological experience is happening. It, like, it, it almost doesn't matter if it's real or not, I think, is, is what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Can you uh, cite uh, the, the 
best evidence data-wise in terms of being simulated environments for things to have a tendency or emergence towards spontaneously uh, greater prediction from your like, slide three-ish? Spontaneous greater predi yes. prediction? Spontaneous I'm, I'm definitely... Discuss the tendency towards... Sure, sure, sure. sure. I, I, I'm definitely using sort of like evolutionary history as existence proof, kind of, like where, where we see... You uh, mentioned in artificial systems for that also. So in that sure. So, so in that case, we can look at sort of like as we scale the uh, LLMs parameters and, and train data, we also see increased problem solving abilities. Like there's lots of things that we can go down, whether that's true or not, um, in terms of like do emergent behaviors exist. Um, but that, that's sort of like the, the, um, the gut that I'm going with. And my follow-up question, using that example we just sure. used, you see that as something that is a byproduct mm -hmm. of programmers deliberately trying to design systems mm -hmm. that are capable of predicting the future, or are you describing this as an emergent property independent of that? Yeah, I, th I think what I am trying to connect um, is the idea that, like, these these drives are using whatever physical structure uh, use and create whatever physical substrate will allow them to enact their drives and therefore like humans right now are sort of like the most efficient way to do that um, and as we create more and more efficient and capable systems um, that allows those drives to also like sort of inhabit and use them thank you judge questions we have okay. any other judge questions all right so we have to move on because of time okay. sorry but You'll be available. Thank you for listening, everyone.